coming to you from Candyland in Burbank, California. Hold on to your butts. This is the Film vs. Film podcast. Jules Winfield, Mace Windu, Nick Fury, Coach Ken Carter, Elijah Price, Frozone, FBI agent Neville Flynn, and Steven. My name is Quinn Boys. I am host of the Film vs. Film podcast. This is the final deciding episode of season one. And I'm joined by my co-host, Leonard Smith Jr. I've kind of already tipped our hand. We know what we're talking about today. Leonard? We were tired of having no motherfucking Samuel L. Jackson in none of our fucking episodes. So here we are, <laughs> talking about the man himself. I mean, who, can, who, who could be Samuel L. Jackson besides Samuel L. Jackson? He's a fucking saint. He's one of one. But we're also joined by somebody else. Since it's the ninth episode, me and Quinn are tied four to four, and the punishment is severe, so we couldn't leave it between us two because neither one of us would have given each other the win. So we have a guest today, and he will be deciding the winner of the episode. His name is Rodrigue Benson. What's up, Rod? Say my full government name for these people, man. I try to keep it low-key, baby. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so we got Rod on the episode. I mean, I feel like he's seen quite a few Samuel L. Jackson movies. I could have cheated for this episode because I could have chosen a movie that I'd known Rod would have chosen as the winner, but I did not. Because I have a little inside information, but I did not do that. I feel like I'm being very sporting just having, allowing, uh, happy to have you here, Rod. Thank you for joining. Uh, Rod uh, and Leonard go way back, so I am... We're stacking the box against me right off the bat. I mean, if you hey, wanted to be, if, if you wanted to have an impartial guest, you should have chose someone light skinned, like mixed, because I'm I'm leaning one way strong, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but but Too dark. Uh, we we do go back, but me and Rod like to argue about everything, and he doesn't really like to give me any wins. So I was honestly, hoping that would play in. I was hoping. I hope. Yeah, like sometimes you choose your friend, hoping they'll help you out, and then they just blow up your spot, which might still be yeah. the case. Who knows? I could have chosen. Uh, uh, what is it? Captain America Civil War because Rod is the biggest fucking Marvel Avengers fucking guy, but I didn't do it because wow. I don't fuck with those movies. Hmm. Okay. I am a big... Uh, I'm, I, I, it, it, so, okay. So, to not bury the point, we, we have a different film prompt every week as anyone who's listened to this podcast knows. And every week beyond that, we have certain criterion that we go down to see what is the winner of the prompt. Leonard and I have gone back and forth. Uh, one thing we touch on every week is uh, in our picks is is Samuel L. Jackson in whatever movie we picked and we put that in there specifically because we're like Samuel L. Jackson was all over movies that we watched when we were growing up he's going to be coming up left and right this should be easy points for one of us every week and we have gone through this whole first season we're on the last battle episode right now and we have not hit a Samuel L. Jackson movie so we had to rectify that this week the prompt is just best Samuel L. Jackson movie which there's some room for interpretation in that, right? I mean, there's always room in for I better interpretation, hope especially with fucking Quinn over here, <laughs> who choose like I feel like he, I feel like I choose my films more on like passion and actually how I feel, and I feel Quinn is like, what should I choose on this prompt to punish Leonard, but also win this? You're prompt? like a sommelier, like choosing a fine vintage from like your wine <laughs> cellar, like going around like giving a lot of thought, and I'm playing like supermarket sweep upstairs, so it's like this movie, <laughs> this. Movie. Give me this one. Um, but you know what? It's been fun. I If we didn't make this category a Samuel L. Jackson movie, I was going to choose. I was purposely going to. We both actually were purposely going to choose a movie with Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> yes. to try to tip the scales for us, but it did not happen. And I think we've actually got a nice representation of the full range of movies that you get when you think of a Samuel L. Jackson movie. I, mean, I think some people think my pick and some people have think more your pick I, I think they're both valid i i feel like white people would say your pick <laughs> uh-huh. um but i feel like it is very opposite ends of the spectrum yeah so, uh let's go ahead and talk about i guess my choice yeah first. you go first Leonard. i always choose the better film in this scenario <laughs> every episode and my my choice was django unchained i could not pick this movie he doesn't show up into the film until an hour and six minutes into the movie. Is it an hour and six or an hour and 30? I think it's an hour and six. I could be, it All might right. be an hour and 30. It's a long It's movie. a long way in. But he's in the movie very predominantly in the second half, and he carries that bitch. Like, he's the closer. Like, he, if this movie is a very good movie, if Samuel Jackson isn't, 
isn't in it. But if he's in it, and he was, it became a great movie. Um, I did not say that. Uh, anyways, uh, so uh, my choice is Django Unchained. I'm sure we've all seen it. I saw it three times in theaters. It's about a slave who gets who was a free slave, and then I guess. Is that to- if I'm thinking of toy use slave? <laughs> <But> what? <laughs> he was a slave. Do you and remember then, your own movie line? <laughs> well, I he was freed. Re- I, I couldn't remember if he was free and then he got captured again like he was supposed to be free. Or no. he just became like, oh. He, he was walking in a chain game early. And, and then Christopher Waltz character yeah. buys him. No, he kills the, he's, the bounty is on the head of the slave owner who's walking him. Oh. So everyone goes free in that group. Yeah. Come on, man. I didn't even watch that part no, of the no, movie. No, but no, he, but he specifically was also lo- looking for Django. I don't think that's part of it. <laughs> it wasn't no why would he, he le, Django has no legend no name no nothing why would he be looking for him? okay cool this is where we end up arguing because you say some crazy shit sometimes I'm like this is easy this is the first <laughs> minute of the movie you <laughs> this chose is working well, well, man. beautifully so far for me I love listen it. man keep going my man was a slave, right? Free. And I would think it's pretty important how the freed slave main character gets free in the movie that you picked, Leonard. But yeah, but that ain't got shit to do with that. Samuel L. Jackson. Okay? <laughs> so I might be a little hazy on the first two minutes of the film, but the, he become he teaches him how, how to become a bounty hunter. Do you want to know what? Ha- I'm sorry, just to, do you want to know? So Schultz, Doctor Schultz, which is Christoph Waltz. Does specifically he is looking for Django because he has Django has knowledge on three outlaw uh, brothers. Exactly. That he, oh, that's so he right. was not, specifically looking for Django. That's right. It's not altruistic. He's he's buying his freedom so that he can use him in his bounty hunting game and whatever. Uh, but then we find out Django obviously has his own. So Rocky to eyes. Dick. Um, Deke, Dick Eaton tastes <laughs> taste salty. <laughs> Leonard Jr. <Jr. laughs> I haven't showered. Um, it's like a cinnamon challenge in here. God. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the first. It's, you know, very much like a Western where it's like, all right, we're going to go through a few different progressions of stories and it's long as fuck. Yeah. And the first half of the movie is very enjoyable. We get to see um, Django learn different bounty hunting skills, killing a lot of white people, yeah. white slave owners and whatnot. And then it's really about what Django truly wants is his wife, the love of his life, who is at Candyland. And uh, he wants her back. And Christopher Waltz, after... Succeeding in his uh, mission on killing these certain people who Django knows and has seen, he's like, "All right, I'm going to pay you back." Like he doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm "They become be- friends." Yeah. They become friends, and he's like, "All right, well, I'm going to help you get your wife back." And that's where we end up at Candyland with Calvin Candy. Calvin, Calvin Candy. Calvin Candy. Man, what a fucking mark! <laughs> <laughs> you mark ass trick. Mark ass trick. <laughs> and we meet Philip. The head Negro, the head nigga on the plantation. Rod, you got to remember that this, 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 his name is Steven. Steven, <laughs> God damn it. Leonard, you know, stepping in. Well, I ate a dick a minute ago, so I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I don't feel like it's Philip. <laughs> I was wrong I just it, two minutes ago. I knew ago. it was like the, one of the whitest names you could have. Like Steven is a very, it's also like, what? some that like Steve is like, this is a guy named Steve. Steven, for whatever reason, seems more subservient. <laughs> <laughs> so... Really, yeah, he's the head house. When slave. you meet him, you're like, oh, he's just some old, decrepit, like Uncle Tom house Negro. But you then learn there's more to him, and he's kind of putting on a show so people don't realize that he's basically running Candyland. Mm-hmm. Like he's signing all the checks. Calvin is never there, and he's running all these these uh, slaves. He's like is the head Negro in charge, basically. I thought you were gonna say he's running all these niggers. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. You like be like pause and switched up. <laughs> it's, it's slaves. But basically, he's the biggest piece of shit you could possibly find. Yeah. He's got a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome or whatever the fuck it is where he... It's almost worse than... I mean, I don't know, Rod. It's like, worse than Like, because it's... I, he seen, like, that, there's that great scene where... Well, it, like, so when, when they first arrive, Django is on a horse uh, with the rest of the procession because they're going to Candyland under the guise that they want to buy one of... Uh, Calvin Candy's fighting slaves. Mandingo. 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 <laughs> fighting slaves. That sounds like the name of some baseball team from 1910. Guys, <laughs> and it wasn't in the Negro League. The Albuquerque fighting slaves. Yeah, no, this is an MLB team. <laughs> they became the Orioles in 1914. But, uh, uh, but I, I'm going to be stepping lightly this whole time. No, they, so he's on a horse, and Samuel Jackson, Stephen is like the most, like, racist of the like he's so internalized it and so you're like this guy is just the most like you said he's like the biggest uncle tom but then 
later on in the dinner scene where they're like doing the transaction and they're trying to slyly also buy Django's wife along with uh, the fighting slave. The Broomhilda. Broomhilda. <laughs> um, Mandingo. Uh, was it Black Hercules? <laughs> Black Hercules, yeah. Hildy. Um, uh, Steven kind of susses out what they're doing and he like interrupts Calvin and he, he draws him into the back room, the library, where he's like sitting there like with a, a glass of brandy and he's he, it's very diabolical and he like makes the switch where for the first time he speaks like normally like you realize it's all it's all set up so he's not i would say i would argue he's not it's not like pt or, or stockholm syndrome it's it's even worse it's like he realizes exactly how that character is supposed to look and act to be not thought of and that allows him to kind of control everything and even calvin which we exactly he controls literally everybody because calvin i guess you know he raised calvin and calvin yeah. is dumb as fuck and I mean, it's like Calvin played by Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> uh, Steven realizes that like anywhere else, he's a slave. Like if he leaves Candyland, he's a slave and he's going to get treated like shit. But on this little, little piece of land, few more than little. It's a huge ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huge ass acres of land. He's fucking king of the castle and he takes advantage of the situation and he's a terrible person. But also not unlike many black people to this day who, especially a generation older than us, would say if you just play the game and make white people feel comfortable, you can achieve great things in this world. Lindsey Graham basically said that last week when he's like, black people and immigrants can be anything in South Carolina as long as they vote Republican. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the exact same logic but, that but, has never fucking he, changed. Okay, you're right. I was going to say, I was thinking you were going to say they try to, you know, tap dance and do whatever, but then when they get to that position of power, then they try to help their people. This is no, all this is self-indulgent. Not, no, like, but these people that I'm talking about, and I would have to throw my mom under the same bus. Oh shit! They, they don't do try not. to help shit when they get there. They're like, "I'm here now. Y'all niggas didn't figure it out. You should have played the game like I did." Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Samuel Stephen is interested in no one else's liberation or like life. He's just trying to. He's looking out for himself. And I don't know. I mean, Sam does such a great job. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Like, so when. Sorry, keep going, but I, I have thoughts on no, that. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. When I first saw this movie, I, I saw it a couple times in theaters as well. Uh, he, uh, T- Tarantino's more re- most recent film before this one was Inglorious Bastards, which was kind of the same thing. It was like a spaghetti western take on the Holocaust uh, or in World War II and Jews getting revenge against the Germans and all that. So this was, from a glance, if you hadn't seen it yet, this sort of the same idea, but for American slavery and, and black people. It's like, Django is going to take revenge against. So it's like very, you go into it and you're like, great, cool. Let's see him, you know, get his revenge. Uh, But I feel like uh, when you get to this part of it, like Steven is, he complicates it, right? Because it's Samuel L. Jackson, who's an actor that everybody loves, playing like the biggest Uncle Tom that we've ever seen on screen. Like I'm trying to think. And when I first saw that performance, the first time I think you see him uh, is when he's coming in on the horse and he's like, is he on that horse? Like yeah. it's like that. Who's whole that nigga on that now? And he won't let it go. For yeah. Like like the whole scene is him asking about the horse for like two total well, see, minutes. This is why I think <laughs> I loved it, and I for sure black people loved it because when you, especially before this was like came out in 2012, movies when they talked about slavery or these times, they fucking always half-assed it, whitewashed it. They didn't want to like upset the viewer. I know this is Quentin Tarantino, but like obviously he knew that Samuel L. was going to be playing this role, but it was like it wasn't half-assed. It was like if this was like if this character really existed, there mm-hmm. were these people in the past, and in the entire film, like with the dog scene is very upsetting, and it's but like, this happened to people, yeah. and he didn't whitewash it, and I feel like Samuel L. I don't know if anybody else could have done it justice the way Samuel L. did it. There's, I think, a trope in like. A lot of, you know, it's the it's a stereotype, right? A lot of, like, black prestige films tend to deal with slavery. You know, with black people, black film expect directors, not to put down any of those films. And I think it came out after. But if you look at, like, 12 Years a Slave, um, uh, you know, the main character is, a, is a, a free man who becomes a slave. So it makes sense for him. But, like, they, under, for res- reasons of respect, they don't really show, like anyone acting like Sam, you know, it's dignified kind of quietly suffering people, which is how I'm sure a lot of people were, but that of course, Quentin Tarantino is going to give us like Samuel L. Jackson playing Steven, who, like you say, it's like a character we don't see, but was definitely a type you would think, you know, those kind of house slaves that just 
you know. And you know me, man. I appreciate the real. I love the real. So Well, that's... I think more than it just being real, the first time I saw it, it was like shocking. I was like, because mm-hmm. he's not in the movie at all. I don't even know if he was in the trailer at all. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, what? And then it just gets progress. Like, I've never hated a movie character more than this character ever. Exactly. I think you're right. Like, I don't think, think he's in the trailer. Because you see him for the first time. He's got the tuft of, like, little, like a... Uh, um, he looks Django, like a goddamn Krispy Kreme. Yeah, Django he's calls like, him... <laughs> doesn't Django call him, like, Snowball, Snowball or yeah. something? <laughs> like, he said, I'll knock your ass off that horse when he's talking to it. Like, it, it's, a ridic- it's a ridiculous character, and he looks ridiculous, too. Like, everything about Samuel It Steven. was just great because, like, you're watching, you're like, man... You're like, all right, Calvin is the, the antagonist. The yeah. And then his, like, little, uh, who's the really good actor that was the sharpshooting white dude who was going to cut his balls off? I don't know. He's in a lot of shit as, like, the exact same guy. He's though. always <laughs> the rest. But, like, you're yeah. thinking, because, like, when they're, like, on their way to Candyland, they're like, all right, you're like, he's the main antagonist, and then the second dude is going to be a problem as well. But then they're like, nope. Pulled the fucking sheets from under you, motherfucker. It's Samuel L. Jackson is the worst person. And... It's so good because his death is so fucking gratifying. It's just awesome. When he shoots him in the fucking knees, it's it's just great. I was just like, yes. It's it's also gratifying having just watched this a minute ago because he spends a decent amount of time telling Django how he's going to kill him. And he's like, that would be too easy. This would be too easy. And Django comes up with the most creative version of killing someone. Like, kneecap him. And then have like the the stick of the, he blows up the house with dynamite, right? But the the fucking wick or whatever it's called is like twenty eight feet long. <laughs> so so he just has time to like out. talk all his shit as he's dying, <laughs> and he knows he's gonna blow. That's the most creative motherfucking killing that he never thought of. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, the uh, the actor you're referring to, the white guy far- ranch hand who plays, uh, it's Walton Goggins, who's a tremendous actor. He's a great actor, virulent racist than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> I've never heard his name before. That's interesting. Walton Goggins sounds like what that guy would be named. Though. <laughs> it, really it sounds like the name of a, his character in the movie. It doesn't sound like a real person. His to character name that. in the movie is named Billy Crash, but I put it to you. If his character was named Walton Goggins, it would be, it would be better. <laughs> He's also in The Hateful Eight, and he plays a racist in that, also yeah. with Samuel Jackson. Um. Okay, so we got Django down. Now it's time to switch. Oh, Lord. <laughs> to flip the switch. <laughs> to the other end of the spectrum. Uh, I picked... A film where Samuel L. Jackson is the lead and is a hero, which is perhaps what white people are more used to seeing him as. Uh, the 2006 joke movie, Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> this movie uh, feels like it was like made for the 80s. So there's a story about this movie. I think it's true. Uh, I could look up on IMDb, but I don't know how we verify. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's right. I remember when Samuel L. Jackson uh, was pitched this film and, and, and uh, was told about it, he didn't need to read the script. He didn't need someone to explain to him what happened. He was just given a script, uh, and it said, untitled Snakes on a Plane movie, or something like that. Because that's the idea of the movie. <laughs> and Samuel Jackson agreed to be in the movie, but he said, do not change that fucking title. He's like, this, isn't, this is the title, Snakes on a Plane, and I will be in this movie. Because Samuel Jackson has that kind of prestige mode that he's in, often in quentin tarantino films or we talked about some of the m night movies he's done and he has that uh kind of serious acting upper echelon samuel L. jackson performance but i would say in the over 180 imdb credits that he has there's also a ton of like this is just a fun movie where samuel L. jackson just plays a badass i'm thinking the other guys i'm thinking deep blue sea i'm thinking of those for lack of a better word, B movies that are elevated by Samuel L. Jackson, just kind of hogging the camera, getting up in there, screaming things, saying motherfucker, like laying down the law. And this is, I would say the ultimate of those kinds of movies. Okay. okay, But explain the film to the people. I thought I did. There are yeah. snakes on a plane. I, like, <laughs> I think that explains the movie. You don't yeah. have to say anything Samuel else. Jackson didn't need a plot okay. summary. Why do you? Some dude killed. Some dude watches an a, a AD get killed or a district a DA. The movie a starts. The movie starts, guy, starts very racist. With a white guy mountain biking <laughs> or like dirt, uh, dirt motorcycle, biking. Yeah, whatever. And then he stumbles upon a, a DA getting killed by a baseball bat upside down. It's like the scene from. Uh, uh, the Untouchables with De Niro and the baseball bat, except there's none of the subtlety. This guy's just hanging upside down. And what's his name? The, it's a it's a gangster. Eddie Kim. Eddie Kim. Eddie Kim just brains him with a baseball bat, gets blood all over his white suit, and then 
for whatever reason, like he's Why hidden. Do you wear a white suit. Yeah, there's so much. Beat him to first death. of all, I don't. They're in Hawaii, so I guess they're supposed to be like Hawaiian. But also, his name is Kim, which is a Korean name. So they're like Korean Hawaiian. The Koreans living in Hawaii. I have so many questions about this. Where, I know. I think they went to Hawaii because he was on vacation in Hawaii. So they're like went to go kill him while he was in Hawaii. Right. So it's L.A. Koreans. <laughs> yes. Who go to Hawaii? Yep. To kill. A DA yes. there yes. instead of doing it here, and like, won't they? Won't they know that he flew to Hawaii to kill him? Like, if he's all, like, what? And it's it's yeah. It, it, listen, you're gonna get plot, caught up in the plot. Then we're gonna be here. We're gonna <laughs> yeah, be here until we tomorrow. are. <laughs> we're gonna be here in nine hours. <laughs> all you need to know is, for whatever reason, these parties converged in Hawaii, where and they decided <laughs> the best way to kill this witness was to put five hundred. Also. So, how did they get this many goddamn snakes let's, on them? Let's back okay, up. You for a back up though. So, so Sean. So his name is Sean Jones. He's a dirt biker and a surfer, and he witnesses the murder. And like he got away with, it, or rather, he 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 could get away, right? He witnesses them kill the murder, but he's hiding in a bush. No one saw him hiding. And then he decides, let me get on my dirt bike and vroom vroom out of here while these yeah, guys are still to leave. standing over the corpse. So they immediately know. Well, somebody fucking saw us. Uh, they they track him down to his apartment, which is where FBI agent Neville Flynn, played by Sam Jackson, <laughs> intercedes and saves him from being murdered by these uh, these hitmen. And then he's like, "You got to fly to Hawaii. You got to testify against Eddie Kim. He's he's a danger. He's a menace. He's a danger to society." What's, what's the first thing he said to him? Oh, that yeah. might be a question yeah. you're gonna ask me later. I don't uh, know. What something like shut he's up like, and stay yeah. with me and you'll you'll live yeah. or something. Yeah. Do as I say it's, and you'll live. It's basically <laughs> a repurposed Terminator line. Come with Wait, me if you want to live. The whole before any snakes are introduced. Yes. That whole portion of the movie, which basically concludes with Eddie Kim like beating the shit out of somebody with like Taekwondo. Yeah. Is the transporter. Yeah. I'm like, what is happening here? <laughs> this is the tra- why does the bad guy always have a shirt off and you're like. He practices karate, or I'm pretty sure it's Taekwondo, I for no did, reason. Yeah. He never kicks another person the whole time. No. And it's just like, this is just, let you know how badass this guy could be. We're not just going to show you. He used a bat before, but he could use his feet if he wanted to. <laughs> I don't understand. It does seem like there was probably an act of this movie where he had something to do in the finale, like some fight that they were like, ah, forget it. Like, you it, never see him after that. No. After he beats the guy up with his shirt off, no. you don't see him again. It's, it's very bizarre. This is like a... If someone gave like a sci-fi movie a twenty million dollar budget, like it's it's a very, you know, it's a B movie. Like I said, I admit that up front. But but they they decide they have to bring Sean Sam uh, Neville Flynn. Sam, I'm just gonna call him Samuel Jackson. He has to bring him to L.A. So they put Sean on a plane. Uh, it's a commercial a, plane. It's a commercial flight. It's late night. Uh, well, red they eye. Had, they and had so, a private jet, but they wanted to throw them off the scent. Of like getting killed in the private jet, so they don't tell anyone. Didn't work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they get. They never say why it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they do. They do. There's a guy who he sees the dog. Like, oh yeah, he works for the airport. He phones it in. Yeah, but they still got so many snakes on the plane that quickly. Exactly. That was like one second before. Exactly. <laughs> they were boarding the plane. With everything's already loaded, and they're like, There's he's like 25 B. My like, favorite okay. line is when, when so, so yeah, they, they get on the plane, they take up first class, and there's all these kind of, like like the movie Airplane, there's all these kinds of like types that you're introduced to, like the two kids flying alone, or because it's 2006, the, the girl who's sort of like Paris Hilton, who has a dog in her bag and is kind of, you know, uh, vapid Bro. and so... And then there's the, the dickish Englishman who's like, I can't believe I don't have my first class. They have all those types. They put Sean on the plane. Um, and then they, you see uh, everyone because they're going from Hawaii. So they all get laid while they get on the plane, which is like, do they do that? They do that you, when you arrive yeah, in Hawaii. You, oh, you don't do, do it leaving Hawaii you and you definitely don't do it on a red eye. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you doing? Put this on and go to sleep. Oh, now oh, leaving forgot, Hawaii. Here you, you, forgot, go. <laughs> you forgot one of the biggest tropes or the character tropes is. The it's the last day of work. Oh, there are two <laughs> flight attendants. It's last there are day two of flight work. attendants who it's their last rodeo. And then, um, and then the rapper. The rapper. Uh, he was ahead of his time with Three the whole G's. fucking uh, uh, hand sanitizer and being afraid of germs. Yeah. I will say though, it, I don't know if this is jumping too far ahead. No, please jump. No right. black person died in this movie, and I was like, what? Yeah. What is happening here? I was expecting him to go down, but not one black person they, died. They do not die, but they play the black people extra. Like, they go extra black, yes. They, they play them so hard. <laughs> with the scene where he's like, oh, let me suck the poison out. All right, there's also a trope where it's like, is this dude gay or not? That's the worst. <laughs> we'll get to that when we talk about how the movie's aged. But there is a there is a male flight attendant, and the obvious joke of like all male flight attendants are gay is played for like 
surprise, like a mystery the whole movie because he refers. And then they reveal at the end he's not gay. Yeah, I, when that happened, I was like, wait, were they playing? <laughs> because he grabs the girl at the end. I was like, okay, was was he supposed to be gay? Like the other flight attendants are looking at him. Yeah, like the woman from The Good Wife is like, oh, like I'm so happy that he's not gay. <laughs> I'm so confused at what that was about. Baffling. I don't understand. Also, what that... this movie is the most like mid 2000s movie though. Like. Ever, even more mid two thousands than fucking Ricky Bobby. Like this should be in a put in a fucking time gap. I wasn't so, thinking about that it. until do until he's like, I'll email you. Uh, like we just need internet, and she's like, my phone has pictures and internet at the it same time. It wasn't just a phone. It wasn't just a phone, my friend. But bitch, that shit still don't got no towers over it international a, waters. What are we a, talking about? It was a T Mobile sidekick, my friend. <laughs> T Mobile sidekick. Is that what it was? It I was, thought it was a Palm Pilot. No, she or something. literally was like, my sidekick has both. <laughs> There are there are a lot of like so uh, Leonard I'll let you go but there's a lot of like so Juliana Margulies from The Good Wife plays the main flight attendant and this is her last flight and then she's going to law school which is like <laughs> <laughs> good for her but it's shouldn't never she already been shouldn't like, be going to law school this whole time and like she's it's, passing the bar it's or the it's in the same universe as The Good Wife <laughs> this is before she meets her husband and becomes a lawyer she's <laughs> her last day as a flight attendant that's why she's so compassionate <laughs> I think that's the, that makes as much sense as whatever they were actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the but, amount of snakes on this plane. It, it's a ridiculous <laughs> amount of snakes on a plane. And the fact that everyone, the amount of snakes on this plane, no one is surviving this flight. Can I say before you, my, my favorite my favorite part is, so they get them on the commercial flight, and then you see the bad guys who's like, you know, the air traffic controller is like, they got they got a guy in the unit, and he, he's calling Eddie Kim on his phone, and he's like, are you sure about this? Like, someone says to Eddie Kim, are you sure about this? And it's my favorite line in the movie is Eddie Kim goes, do you think we haven't exhausted every other option? <laughs> so I don't think you have, sir. <laughs> they, including they, just a bomb. Just if a you bomb. can sneak snakes onto a plane, you, you can sneak a bomb onto a plane. You it was time released. <laughs> not just snakes. Snakes from all over the fucking world. Globe. That's <laughs> way harder than sneaking a bomb onto a plane. At one point in this film, a fucking 15-foot an- snake. Co- anaconda king fuck. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah, the snake from J-Lo's anaconda yeah. movie. I, I wrote down that it was it, it was a horror from? crux. <laughs> it just fucking slithered out. I'm like, they got where N- the fuck is Neville to slay this giant beast? They got Nagini in this movie. Uh, <laughs> I, no, also, it's a, they have a timer rigged in the box to when they're halfway through the fight, exactly far enough where you wouldn't turn back to Hawaii, to release the snakes. And it's like, if you're putting timers in there, just put a bomb in just there. Just put a bomb. Airplanes may have also, malfunction, how the malfunction fuck did all that the time. dog not notice all those goddamn snakes? <laughs> the, the bomb sniffing dog? It oh, whatever. I think we just worked our... You know what? I have to give this movie credit. They do take some time to show the bomb sniffing dog. They do. The bomb sniffing dog bullshit. would have sniffed out if they put a bomb on the plane. So you but, know what? Maybe they did exhaust every other option. The dog would also sniff out a goddamn shitload of snakes. And like all the, and the pheromones and probably would have fucked up the dog too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they do. They put so they put pheromones on the lays, which they're inexplicably giving people flying from Hawaii to LA. So the snakes, when they get released, as if snakes need a reason to attack people in this movie, they they go crazy for the lays, which everyone is wearing and so that makes them kind of jump through the cabin kind of coming at people and and causing mayhem and there's all manner of inventive snake deaths which we won't go over because i have a quiz for you okay but leonard if you have any more on this movie or rod if you have oh, any more i've got on this a couple movie, more things to yeah, add. Oh, I, I, okay the snake pov what the fuck yeah snake vision i started the calling snake it POV. I was like, oh, in snake vision it's just again. like fucking vision trash it's like vision black filter. yes please Okay, here's just because right, I got one more thing. I got I got some notes. The CGI for these snakes were fucking. The CGI is trash. I feel like they did that on purpose to I, like make it more comical. It's so bad. Uh, yeah. So the rapper signs the girl's titties right off the bat. Yeah. And the signature just looks like Korean. It doesn't look like English at all. the The woman goes to throw up, and the snake is in the vomit bag. And I'm oh. like, you would a vomit bag weighs nothing. If there's a snake in there, you would feel a goddamn snake. And it just jumps out and bites her in the eye. Yeah, she's got a lot of adrenaline running. She's not thinking about it. They're f- okay, I won't say all the deaths because you said you're going to go over that you later. Can, you could go up as uh, – yeah, well, no, I actually mean, the, save The woman gets her titty bit by the snake. <laughs> yeah, save – Oh, you know there had to be some titties. <laughs> save I'm just, the rest of them, actually, because I, I am I'm going to try to give you a couple just like how this is so mid-2000s. Okay. Wait, I got one more. I got one more. At the end, everyone's fucking. Let me get your number. Should I got your number? Let me get your number. I got your number. 
There's I'll a see lot you of, next week now that we live. They like just make a, a love like they're like Juliana Margulies and Samuel L. Jackson, okay. And then it's yeah. like Sean and like the the other flight attendant, okay. okay. Like everybody hooks Even up. Even though this motherfucker pulled a gun on the whole goddamn <laughs> flight. Oh uh, yes, yes, the uh Flex. The what's rapper. the do you remember oh, the rappers? Three three uh three, three G's grand. three G's. Three G's, three G's, which is hilarious because in two thousand six that means three thousand dollars, but now it's like like bad Wi Fi. That's not aged very well. Okay. Um okay, first of all, the girl wearing the low rise skirt with the thongs poking out of the side. That's the titty girl. That yeah, so two thousands. Like what the fuck? They there. pull down the smoke alarm to smoke weed in the plane. Like motherfuckers can't bus. smell weed? And like, if the bomb sniffing dogs can smell what what are they trained to smell? I don't understand. They should smell the weed also. Then another dude goes to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't know if there was a bet where somebody was like, I'm gonna write this in a script at some point in my life. Or if they were in the writer's room, like, I bet you can't get this into the oh, script. Oh, I know what's coming. <laughs> Fucking bitch, get off my dick. <laughs> oh, he I'm bites sorry. the snake bites his dick. And he says, Fucking bitch, get off my dick. What? And then he dies and from he, hitting his head. Oh, that's the, the, he, he smashes he's his so, head into the. He's so like shocked by the snake. Fully honest, he doesn't just bite the tip of his penis. The snake takes the full hog. The in snake deep throats him for sure. Yeah, his, then, his dick is two inches. It's like CGI, like the tails wagging around, and, and then he like throws his body around the cabin, the, and he the hits his head into the mirror. What? What plant has a glass mirror? <laughs> Uh, she sure. tried flushing him out the airlock. I mean, if you flush it, that goes right I out. About but, that. I was like, flushed it. But instead, he whips his head so violently that he, he cuts it and he slides down, and it's like blood sliding down the bathroom. And that's two bathrooms that have at that point been incapacitated. So anyone else has to go number one or number two on that flight. Forget it. There's dead people in those bathrooms. Um, it's a wild movie. Okay, right. I'm not saying it's giving, but is it? Let's talk about Samuel Jackson. And we talked about we okay. talked about Stephen a lot. What that kid you... would have lost his arm too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that little kid would have lost his fucking arm. Um, and apparently, black people aren't afraid of snakes because they was fucking black people was fucking snakes up in this movie. So I yeah, Keenan's in this movie. Have we mentioned yeah, that? Keenan yeah. Thompson, Thompson early, early plays well, the most fucking black. They play black caricatures. All the black people are caricatures. It's fucking. Stupid. It's that shameless black stereotype of the. Guy, first of all, Keenan's playing a security guard in this movie, which is uh, kind of wild. Although I guess he's a childhood friend of Three G's. It's kind of an entourage. Situation. Three G's says when the snakes are out killing everybody, and like Three G's is running around, that nigga comes up to him and says, "Y'all supposed to have my back, nigga." What? There's three hundred snakes on this goddamn plane. I'm supposed to have your fucking back. I'm trying to live. We've seen nigga. Three G's like push people <laughs> into the line of snakes <laughs> to get out of the way. But so it's that it's that stereotype. We've seen it time and time again of the. The black character who spends the whole movie playing video games and then has to land a plane, but he knows how to do it because his video games are flight simulators. So suddenly he can land like. But he never gets the high score, just like all black people. His brother's <laughs> got to be better than him. He's just like, slightly. I never, I never, la- I never landed the plane. I would just restart it. <laughs> I just remember when they first, because I saw this movie once in theaters and I have never seen it since. But I, I same, saw it again, literally saying today, and I was like, oh, when when three G's is like. I forget Keenan's name, but he's like, my boy, he can fly, he can land this plane. And Keenan's like, oh, sure, I can do it. And then, like, only while he's, like, behind the, the controls is he like, oh, it's just the video game I've been doing. And then, every, like, Samuel Jackson's like, you're still our best bet. <laughs> it's like, this is wild. This he, is more ridiculous than a bunch of snakes on a plane. It's that Keenan is able to land it by playing the PSP. Well, the thing is, when, he's, when he turns to him and says, my boy can do this, he's like, you got experience? He's like. Over 2,000 hours. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? 2,000 hours of video game time. You Don't say what bitch. you mean. I think I played 2,000 hours of Ocarina of Time, but it doesn't mean I know how to ride a horse or battle Ganondorf. I, uh, all right. All right. So Samuel Jackson, uh, he plays a pretty stereotypical or a, a pretty typical Sarah Samuel Jackson role. He's, a, he's not a cop. But he's an FBI agent. He's an authority figure with a gun who wears a leather jacket. And he says motherfuck a lot, and he's badass, but he's he's doing the right thing. I mean, I think that's a pretty – we've seen that from Samuel L. Jackson before. But in this movie, he's the lead, and, and, and you know, it's – it's uh, the, the tone of the movie is based on the tone of kind of his performance. Yes, and you know what? I don't know if this movie gets made if Dave Chappelle doesn't do that. Samuel L. Jackson sketch. <laughs> oh, um, Sam, Sammy Adams? So, Sam, uh, Sam this is how Jackson I talk. <laughs> It's true. Shark ate me. It, it's basically like someone saw Deep Blue Sea and is like, what if you didn't kill Samuel L. Jackson? And what if the whole movie's about, you know, it's a totally different movie, but it's the same movie. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. a creature movie. It's and like the literally the, the whole film is basically a tease of who will die 
and who won't die. Mm. Also, the the white dude who was like the co lead or whatever, yeah, man, he probably thought like, yo, I'm about to make it big in Hollywood. It's I'm the most boring. Star he doesn't do movie. shit in this and movie. He literally, <laughs> we never see him again. He's right. the most. He literally every time he tries to get involved in the movie, Samuel Jackson's like, this is all happening because you stay your ass up there and don't do shit. So he's like, all right, and then just doesn't participate in the movie. <laughs> he had to be like one of the producer's sons. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Sean Jones. Even the name is like not memorable. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> so we've talked about both these films at length. I also made me feel like we should talk about the fact that we had so many choices. We had so many choices. Rod, if you had to pick off the top of your head like your favorite Sam Jackson <laughs> movie, whether that's for his performance or just the movie you like the most, what would you have picked? Man, I guess. I don't know. I, I do like the Avengers movies, but I don't really like consider those to be his movies it's tough because he's supporting in so many movies that he's in like there are a few movies I, I i specifically was trying to choose one where he was like a lead um and it's not like there are no movies like that but there are fewer than you think especially a lot of his most iconic roles like pulp fiction you wouldn't call him the lead of that necessarily you certainly right we wouldn't call him the lead in Django. um but yeah it's it's tough it's it's hard i have a think. i have an off maybe one of his it's not lesser known but i don't think people would think about this but i really like him in kingsman the Secret oh, yeah. Service. He's very good. We can't see the blood. Yeah. And he's got the lisp the whole time. Yeah, yeah. He, he has a lisp. I read the comics and it's a white guy, like a white, like Zuckerberg dude in the comics. So rebranding that as Samuel L. Jackson. I love that. Knowing that they made that choice. Mm -hmm. I fucking love it. Yeah, I like that. I remember that dinner scene in that movie where he's got like McDonald's on fancy plates and yes, stuff, which yes. Donald Trump very did for Trump. Real a few years it, later. Yeah, he, yeah it, he did that before Trump, yeah. which is did Trump get the idea from Samuel L. in I think he Kingsman? Because the whole point of that scene is like all this fine cutlery and like silver plate and like, you know, uh, they the serving dish and they uh, lift it up and it's just like a it's a whopper or whatever. And it's like, uh, it's like, oh, OK, this is ridiculous. And then Donald Trump's like. Remember that. I'm yeah, I that like, oh, uh, I feel like a movie that kind of made him more mainstream as far as to like America and to like white people was that Die Hard movie he did. I've never Die Hard really with a Vengeance. It, but I feel like ever since he did that Die Hard movie, like he's been popping like mm -hmm. hard. All right, so we talk about movies. What about your like favorite characters, Samuel L. characters? I love uh, his. I, lo I, I don't remember the character, PK something, Highsmith or something like that. It's got a ridiculous name, but his character. Uh, in the other guys like he's only in the first 15 minutes mm. and the other guys is a is a good I don't know if it's like one of my favorite Adam McKay Will Ferrell comedies but I love that first part because that is like that's the kind of character that he's playing in Snakes on a Plane it's like the badass cop character and he's like in on the joke in that moment so I've always liked that role it's very short but I think that's one of his funniest I am I have two in mind we already referenced one of them which is Deep Blue Sea yeah, At, not knowing that he was gonna get ate by that shark, and that long ass speech is yeah. one of my favorite movie moments. It's ever. incredible. <laughs> ever. It's incredible. Uh, and I almost other, picked that movie. I was like, he dies too early. He I dies too came early. So close to picking that movie. But it, I mean, picking snakes on the plane is picking that movie. Yes. Just like extended cut. Keep that in mind, Rod. Russell Franklin is the name of that character. Uh, and then I, I I love the character Frozo. Where is my super suit? <laughs> Because you don't really know it's him, and then he says that, and you're like, oh, that's definitely that's Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with, uh, I really like him as Odell Robbie in Jackie Brown. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about Black Snake Moan, which is another, like, it's like another, like, it's basically another B movie where it's like just a trope of Samuel L. Jackson, but in a different way. Which came out first? Because I remember being confused by them coming out relatively nearby and both having Snake in the name. Oh, yeah. Black Snake Moan came out in 2007. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I this also movie got there first. <laughs> also, he was great as Arnold in Jurassic Park. Yeah, hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts, man. It's just a classic line. It's you feel like if they knew who Samuel Jackson was going to be, uh, they would have like thought to give him more, like maybe have him face off against the Velociraptor. Maybe you see that scene. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, he's great in that. Elijah Price in fucking Unbreakable, amazing. But Jules, man, Jules, Jules is Jules the... from Pulp Fiction. Mm. It was really hard for me. I was trying to choose between Pulp Fiction and Django. And uh, if we would have maybe gone with the, if, uh, if I would have stuck with the theme of like being more like older, like when I was younger, seeing them, like saw mm -hmm. Pulp Fiction, when I was like 18, 19. I was like, holy shit, this, mm -hmm. this is great. And I obviously saw Django when I was older. But man, Jules is just a cool ass dude. And he's also bad as fuck. Like, mm. He's just bad as hell. Just... Jules, I think, has all the all the, the moments that we come to think about Samuel Jackson with because he's not 
okay, he's not a cop, but he like carries a gun. He looks cool. He's got the like he says motherfuck a bunch. Like it's got all of the components of the of a Samuel L. Jackson. Like yeah. he that kind of set in place the template and his working with Quentin Tarantino, like he you know all of that. It's not his first movie, but I do uh, think that was the first movie where everybody knew who he was. Uh, that's when he was like a movie star. Yeah. The only bad thing about that role is like he has to be in the same scene with Quentin Tarantino saying nigger. Uh, <laughs> this is not dead nigger That's storage. nothing like Django, though, so I think it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least he doesn't die in the but toilet. But he just such a good job as a role. I feel like he could have won a fucking Oscar for that role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's thought of as obviously Travolta's comeback because Travolta had been away for a while or hadn't been that relevant. But like arguably, historically... So I think should be looked upon more as like Samuel Jackson's coming out. Like, you know, that was a bigger, that was a bigger thing to come from that movie than like battlefield earth or whatever John Travolta did oh, with the God. cloud. That he got. <laughs> all right. Um, well, now that we've talked about all the, yeah. the other movies we probably should have chosen. Let's um, move into the criteria. Let's go quick. to the criteria. Uh, number one, as always, an influence on pop culture, Django. So we're talking, we can, we can talk extra textual, but we should also talk about the movies like snakes on a plane and uh, Django. Listen. As Those, far as Snakes on a Plane is literally a pop cultural Yeah, reference. that is like pop culture. Yeah, that it is pop. They advertise this film as like, we know that this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I saw this in theaters, like, probably the opening weekend. Like, I am not a person who likes trends or, like, tends to follow trends, but I was... I think they were like it was also a trend for like mainstream, but also for like those weird like movie like oh I'm different and I'm gonna go see this movie and I I bit the hook and I enjoyed it. I remember being there was like some people in front of me who were loud as fucking talking during the entire movie, but I enjoyed. It, I remember being mad about that watching the movie, but I enjoyed it. The movie's entertaining as fuck. It is an entertaining film. I cannot deny that. You hadn't seen this before, Rob? Is this- I hadn't seen it. Yeah. Which is why, again, when Black Snake Moan came out the next year, which I also didn't see, I was like, is this a sequel? Like, I don't understand what's happening. Why does he keep showing up in Snake movies? Uh, I didn't think it was that entertaining. It was like, I guess for me, I'm like someone who, I watch a ton of movies, but I don't watch shit that's like, I feel like will be traumatic for me. Like, movies about planes going down? Nope. A bunch of fucking snakes biting people in the dick? Nope. I was just like, I was like shocked the whole movie. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy it. It wasn't the worst movie I've seen, because that's Bring It On Again, Fight to the Finish. <laughs> Samuel <laughs> Jackson in that? No, he's not. But it was very bad for me. I did not have fun. If you want to hear Rod talk about that film, check out the crossover. Believe in the crossover podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, so that's totally fair. I will say that, like, if we're talking about pop culture, I would say this is one of – it's become a trend in movies. Uh, there are any number of, like – people that seek these movies out but i would say like truth in advertising like by calling it snakes on a plane we talked about samuel jackson was kind of on that he was like that's what you got to call it don't call it like flight 58 or whatever call it snakes on a plane and i think that kind of led into their advertising which was very much like this is a b movie the title is silly stars samuel l jackson and they very much put up front the iconic line which I'm also going to play into pop culture. I've had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. That was in the trailer. That was in the trailer. That was in the trailer. And that more so than the title, I would say. And I think that is also, that's kind of evergreen. You just say that. You can say that when you're upset. You can say that when you're fed up. Like, it, it, it's kind of just the. You can literally say that. You can replace snakes with anything. Yeah. It's a little bit like, uh, you know, like a great movie line. Except it's ridiculous. But it is a great In the movie same movie. way as, 100%. you know. It's ridiculous, though, because he's. Like this is the point of the movie where it's like, it's basically over. Yeah, like they've yeah. they've basically won, the and then he, all of a sudden he gets mad again. Like ah, I'm tired of these motherfucking stuff. I was like, why is he so mad again? All of a sudden, you it's over. Just go because they don't know that the pilot isn't alive anymore. Yeah, yeah. So they're just like, it, it's. Just, I don't understand why he got so fucking mad. Also, if you like this movie, I assume you guys both like Sharknado, which yeah, is the same it. fucking premise say what the thing is it's a tornado of sharks i i didn't like this movie it was entertaining okay but 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 that is i guess i think i would say that that plays into pop culture as well a little bit of like just nakedly like this is a bad idea movie but like we're just going for we're all having fun here kind of a thing i think before snakes on a plane i'm not saying it's the first but it's the first that i can think of of a movie that was marketing itself to you as like, don't take this seriously. This is kind of a joke. And yeah, today you probably would make that movie like on I sci-fi. Said, it's like an eighties movie. It's basically like, Hey, this is airplane, but like action. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like in the way that weird science or something, which exactly. I haven't seen is kind of telling you so, like, weird science. I don't know. I mean, at the time movie. it had a lot of pop cultural influence, mm-hmm. but it didn't last very long. None of it is to do with the movie itself. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, Django, I feel like affected the culture mm-hmm. a lot more. Maybe not pop culture, but like I said, I saw this movie in fucking theaters three different times. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I don't know if there's any certain lines from the movie that get referenced a lot, but I, I feel like, like the maybe the whole Silent D thing, and I just feel like black people were very hyped after this movie came out and they were feeling themselves and I don't know. I don't, I there was some, that. there was some controversy. I don't think this plays against it for pop culture, but I remember like, wasn't, I think Spike Lee was, came out and sort of, I think he got into war of words more with Samuel Jackson actually than with Tarantino oh. about who has the right to make, to tell these stories, who has the right to have a movie where they say the N word. If you look times, up anything like about Samuel Jackson in this movie, every article is about him defending Quentin Tarantino right. about mm-hmm. the use of the N word. Which, you know, I feel like those conversations, at the very least, not to, I, I'm not going to come down one way or the other. I'm interested in what you guys think. But, like, uh, those conversations are much more at the forefront now. I don't think we were having that. Like, the, the idea of should Tarantino be making this movie kind of thing, wherever you fall in it, I feel like that was not a, as common uh, a conversation as today in 2020. I don't know if Django pushed well, that more to the front. but uh, I would say, first of all, it's not as big pop culturally because of what you – I think it's – if – Black people were a larger part of the population. But I think because it says the N-word like infinity times, I think white people like it, but they're like, they're not going to go around quoting it because they're like, ah, I'll just keep it to my, it was, it was fun. I'll keep this in my back pocket for dinner when I have a black gentleman over. you seen Django? It's quite, it was riveting. Uh, <laughs> That's why I feel like I always lose pop culture because it's like white people don't see the movies I'm choosing. <laughs> they see this, but they're not going to rewatch it. Like you, They don't get the same joy out of it that you might get out of it. For them, it's more like, Oh fuck! Like our country's has such a checkered history, and they just move on with it. You know what I mean? Uh, but I will say that when it comes to who can make a movie, if it's done well, anyone can make a movie. Is my opinion. And second, we had from the beginning of time until the movie came out for Spike Lee to make this movie. He didn't have the goddamn idea. The idea is uniquely Tarantino's, and it's executed well. Well, he, Django was a film. It's from nineteen seventy. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, sixty-six. But yeah, you get what I mean. Like to do this, could have made exactly a spaghetti western with a black hero. Yes. Okay, so I feel like Snakes on a Plane probably wins pop culture. I was. Oh no, no. Let's take it. Um. So, (laughs) what do you? How do you feel about that, Rod? Yeah, Rod. We'll we'll let you decide. It's tough. I do think if if we're talking about immediately after the film, it's definitely Snakes on a Plane. But if we're talking like longevity, longevity, I don't think anyone just talks about that movie anymore they might quote that quote i think it's basically the line yeah it's basically the samuel jackson line but i think Django is a movie that will be in the pop culture lexicon for years and years to come i'm i'm comfortable giving this one to uh honestly giving this one to to Django as well i think there's more that you're you know i agree there's nothing like the like well uh, shit we forgot about the fucking Calvin Coolidge, Leonardo DiCaprio meme. DiCaprio is yeah. hot. Oh, right yeah. Now. The memes out of this are wild right now. Hot. DiCaprio really goes for it as... Oh, DiCaprio kills... DiCaprio does a great job. There's apparently stories... I think Jamie Foxx was talking about being on set where, like, Samuel Jackson was sort of kind of goading him into giving... Like, like if you're going to do it, just do it. Yeah, Which, apparently there was a moment yeah. where Leonardo was like, I can't be saying this foul ass shit. And Le- Sam was like, stop being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, like, shoot him very, like, you know, he's got, like, a, like a, a goatee and his like, sort of long hair. And, it, like, he's there's, like, red wallpaper behind him and he's got the long, thin cigarette. He looks like the devil. Like, you know, in that, that dinner table scene, uh, he's very good. He's way over the top. But, I mean, that character kind of needs to be and his dynamic like Samuel Jackson has most of the best scenes where he's in the movie are with not Jamie Foxx or Christoph Waltz but they're with DiCaprio okay, um, okay. so let's give it to, let's give it to that I, I, I think I think there is more that uh, and there are some more lines that the ones that don't have the n-word that white people can say from this movie but <laughs> um, uh, but let's go to number two which kind of transitions how well does this hold up we've kind of been talking about it snakes on a plane I don't think it it's very dated. I don't think it's controversial anymore, really. But uh, you know, I, I I don't know like how you would say Django holds up. I feel like Django holds up pretty well uh, now. I mean, because like I said, it wasn't half-assed. It wasn't like fucking the Sandlot where that black kid is not going to be in the pool with those white kids in the Sandlot. That's not happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> We're not adding some bullshit to make fucking the viewers feel happy. 
I was shocked when I watched it, but I, I me being like who I am, I was like, this is good. This is yeah. This is what the people need. This is what mm. they need to see. So obviously, you know, I don't want to. I, I feel kind of weird. I don't honestly feel really any type of way, but I don't know what is up with Tarantino having to say nigger in his fucking movies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like using the hard ER or whatever, but I mean he has to because that's the times. Uh, th- but, in this movie, I would say it's probably the most defensible because like if you're watching Pulp Fiction, it's like you don't. I don't know if you need to be saying. I have yeah. all these characters, these white characters saying it, but if you're gonna tell a story about slavery in the South. It's disingenuous to not. I mean, yeah. he also but like says blacks and then says nigger, and he's supposed to be Australian, so it's just weird. Mm. And the fact that he cast him in that self to, I, I know he puts himself in some of his movies, yeah. But when it's like when you do it, you're all saying the n word. I don't really know how to feel about it. I feel like maybe that's the only thing that doesn't really hold up as far as the film. All right, so we gave pop culture to. Snakes the point doesn't I, hold up at all. I don't. Think I don't it, know. If, I don't. I disagree. I think that whatever Snakes on a Plane was when it came out, it's still that thing and will always be that thing. I feel you. I actually could see Django coming out of favor. If we're, again, if we're, if we're talking about what if this when, if Trump, I use, when Trump gets reelected, if I use the same <laughs> criteria I used for pop culture, if we're looking like 50 years down the line. Snakes on the Plane was always a joke. It will die a joke. Django, yeah, I think people will look back and be like, ooh, like we did that. Like, just especially as people become more and more sensitive, but it's I can like see people we being did like, "That they, we had slavery and we were no, I know that. Slaves. I mean that that again, like the the question you asked about that Spike Lee posed, like, can he make this movie? Is Lee, I, when Leonardo DiCaprio was saying nigger like every third word, is this something that people are gonna like eventually be like, come on guys, you know we can't like like think about how many things just got pulled off TV like in the last four months, like episodes of TV that like. Literally, were like some of my favorite episodes. Some of them, and people are like, you know what? We decided that this is too far. When we go through another wave, people might be like, well, you know, at the time this that, was cool, but now we don't. I'm fuck gonna with think it. that's trash because then it's we're whitewashing history. You might think it's trash. I'm just saying that if we're talking about who's again, if if white people are in charge of what pop culture but, is, they're also in but, charge of what holds up. But we're talking if they about, get over it, they might get over it. <laughs> now it is also unfair because we're talking about today, though, right now, right, and. Django is only eight years old when Snakes on a Plane is 14 years old. Right. But I mean, also on Snakes on a Plane, he's like, oh man, you can't suck the poison out. He was like such a homophobe that he, some... wouldn't let, he would rather have poison in his body than letting a man suck poison out of his body. But I also think, if we're just talking about realism, I know a lot of dudes who would do this. Yes, I, I think you would also you'd be like, ah, it has to be him. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, there's a point where, like, the girl sucking the poison out of the kid's arm. He's like, "Ooh, yeah, that's it right there." I and I like, can Ooh. also see you being exactly the same with that too. <laughs> Wait, why can't I get her to suck my poison out? What are you talking about? If we just right. suck at poison, okay. all right, fine. We'll get snakes on a plane to holds up better somehow. <laughs> I was just, I was just providing counter argument. You so know, I'm not such, making a choice here. Such disdain. Uh, number three, could anyone other than Samuel Jackson have been either of these roles? Uh, FBI agent Neville Flynn or head slave <laughs> Stephen? Yes. Who? Danny Glover. And I also think yeah, for both, yeah. I think well, Danny Glover would have been old as fuck to play, but he's but Samuel so Jackson yeah. was playing. Yeah. This is twenty years ago, also, but and I, I also think like it's just as a random like this wouldn't be for Django, but just for Snakes on the Plane, wouldn't it be fun if it was like Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> that would have been great actually Dude, I've, I've never thought about snakes on his uh, goddamn plane <laughs> <laughs> damn snakes find a way that's pretty funny I think you're I think you're right like Samuel Jackson is this movie but the movie is ridiculous enough the real the snakes are the thing of the movie that yeah you could you Jeff Goldblum is an inspired idea but Danny Glover like a lot of these guys Danny Glover would work for sure you know I could also see you could do Arnold I, it's just sort of like insert action star or I kind of like quirky personality star Martin here. Lawrence would have been hilarious on Snakes on a Plane <laughs> yeah he would I mean any comedian really but the reason I said Danny Glover is because he's also like Angry got that yeah that got that anger to him he could do the cop part yeah, yeah. instantly think of Lethal Weapon yep. and Predator Two yes <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, I don't know if the, the question for Django is could anyone else have done it, but would anyone else have done it? I mean, there's an interesting mm. stuff where Jamie Foxx, I think, is great in this movie, but um, uh, the story goes that originally Tarantino pitched it to Will Smith, who uh, well, turned it down. Here's what? one of my questions. There's one of your questions? <laughs> uh, just give me credit for that Of course Will now. Smith turned this <laughs> turned Will Smith's down. turned down a lot of good shit. He turned on The Matrix. He made, like, After Earth that same year. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> hey, he wanted him and his son to get 
pay. There was no role for Jaden. That was the problem. <laughs> Jaden got <laughs> exactly. He's like all Doc Rivers and Austin. Rivers. What if Django has a son? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know I that mean, anyone think, else would have played that role, that role like Samuel Jackson did. Like, all I don't the know roles if Danny Glover wants to do that. I'm sorry. Say that. Mm-hmm. I'm I sorry. Think. No, I'm sorry. I'm just saying I don't know if anyone else would have wanted to play Stephen the way that Samuel L. Jackson played it, as despicable as he played it. Yeah, I mean, and I think the role was written specifically for him. No doubt. Right. And apparently there was like some super despicable, like it was even more despicable that they cut shit. They cut scenes from the research that I did. Hmm. That like, or Quentin was like, I don't want people like trying to hurt you because, and apparently there like one day maybe a director's cut will come out with more of the shit that he cut from it. So. I will say that because I think it came out around the same time as maybe the first Avengers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't even watch this motherfucker in Avengers. I'm still mad. <laughs> like, and I, I know not mad at Samuel L, but like the character was so powerfully acted and so hateful that I couldn't like I couldn't disconnect it for like so, a period of time. I remember from being, what? Oh, say so, well, just sorry. Yeah, no, like seeing it in like the town over from where I grew up. So it was like, uh, you know, not your town like, wouldn't show it. They're like, we're not. <laughs> you know, there are like two movie theaters: is our town and the town over. But it was the, it was at the other one. Um, I think it was a predominantly white audience. I wasn't like taking a, 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 a poll, but it wasn't all white. But it was like when Samuel Jackson, when Steven is introduced and he has that whole over the top, like, you know, on the mare, who's that, you know, on the horse scene. Um, people were laughing. Like there was a like, are we laughing at this character? Are we like a shan-? So I think like to a black audience, that character is maybe understood like right away a little bit more how despicable this guy is. But like there were definitely people in my audience. It was like it was kind of like those uncomfortable like. Is this like the comic relief? You know, like uh, you didn't. That's a good point. The three times I saw it, people all laughed at yeah. that part. I saw Black Klansman in mm. Vancouver, Canada, and at in and in El Segundo by the airport, and wildly different reactions oh, to yeah. all the same cool. shit. Like I was, in Canada, I was like, "What?" I think people were like scared to laugh, or like, and even like in in El Segundo, like, there were literally like old black ladies in there, like standing up, like cheering, like, "Yeah, motherfucker, get him." Get him! Black Man's been so fucking good. I love that movie. <laughs> Black Man's been, that is a good movie. Um, oh, so but basically, from what it sounds like, we said a few different people could have been in stakes on a plane, even though it's like the quintessential. It was probably also written for Samuel Jack. It wasn't written it, for him, but it like, wasn't written for him. But yeah, he was like there. But no one else sky. could have played Steven. I agree. So it sounds like. I won that game. No one else would have. I still think Danny Devi- uh, Danny Glover Danny could DeVito. have done it. Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But that yeah. nigga, I'm not there. <laughs> I think it's it's I way more play. limited. Just just literally those two people. The only two people I can see playing. Yeah. And then I can see like 20 people playing Steven on – or sorry, uh, Snakes on the Plane. Neville Flynn. Yeah, you know it wasn't written for Samuel L. Jackson because the main character's name is Neville Flynn. <laughs> All right. So we're halfway through. I think this is about the time we usually do our little games. We do our games. And we, real quick, only because I think it's not that interesting, I'll just give the box office numbers. So this is number four, stats and games. With, uh, Django cost $100 million to make worldwide, $425 million in. That's a huge success, I think, especially for Tarantino movies, which were sometimes – profitable but not all you know they're always popular but they're not huge box office that's like a marvel yeah, i feel movie. like they they did a lot better i feel like his movies get rewatched and rewatched i feel like maybe the sales after the factor maybe probably yeah. did who knows so comparatively snakes on a plane cost 33 million dollars to make i don't know wow. i think most of that money must have gone to samuel jackson that. but uh <laughs> Um, it uh, made $62 million. So let's call that double its budget. It was a success, but a pretty modest success. But when you consider the concept and the pitch, I think that's pretty... Okay, but okay. T- so what, made what four are those, times uh, What are those budget. numbers? What are those... St- uh, as far as... All right, I'll tell you, the Rotten Tomatoes on uh, Django, 87%. Okay. Uh, on IMDb, it's uh, 8.4 out of 10. And then the Google users... Bro... Every Google users <laughs> thing is ninety three percent. I don't believe the Google users stat anymore. They love it. Um, snakes on a plane, Boy. crazy. I was mad when I saw the rotten. T- say the score. Sixty nine percent. How is it that of course high? It's 69%. That's better than a lot of movies that I actually really enjoyed. I think really Carlo enjoy Nights think was, are... has a worse score than that. What most black movies have a worse score than all that. the blacks? <laughs> yeah, there is like it's white people use Rotten Tomatoes, but IMDb. It's a five. Snakes on a plane isn't a white movie. It's a snake movie. But, <laughs> ah, 
I think five point four is still very high for this movie. It's too high. I mean, the people like I, 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 when I looked at the Rotten Tomato score, I actually read some of the reviews, and everyone kind of has the same pitch that you gave earlier, which is like, we get it. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. That's what I'm saying. If you just go in and just have fun with it. Don't expect too much. It's like, a, it's like. Um arming yourself against the inevitable it's like we know like so it's like you, you don't make fun of a kid whose last name is like boner when they come up and they're like, <laughs> they're like yes my last name is boner come out give me the best you can do and people are like ah damn we can't even make fun of him he admits it so it's like you know this is what snakes on play on a plane did which is like we get the joke and there's nothing you can say about us that we're not already aware of so that's how it gets 69 percent because people are like i don't know how to critique this movie i will tell you this on google Reviews, it's 83%. <laughs> the first time, it's not actually 93%. So it and it's still pretty high. high. Yeah, no, that's, still, still that's very high. high. For a movie like that, I, I, don't, it, I don't know if there's any other movie like that that is rated this high. Uh, yeah, I can't think of one off the top okay. of my head. Deep Blue right. Sea probably was rated poorly. Because, again, Deep Blue Sea like, technically wasn't leaning into it, even though it's the same type of movie. It's also but. a bad movie. That movie is just called Super Sharks. <laughs> then then. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play some games. I'm gonna do mine first because mine is a lot, not as maybe as prepared is is uh, Quinn's. I'm gonna ask you some questions about Django, about Samuel Jackson, Quentin Tarantino relationship. All right. All right. So Django in this film, he kills a lot of people, and I enjoy all of it. How many people does Django kill in this film? All right, so right off the bat, I have to just take a guess because he shoots a lot of, like, there's a lot of mayhem that I, I wasn't counting kills, but I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say he kills 20, 34 people in this movie. Did you look this up? No. That is the exact That's how many? Fucking That's the exact number. I was you went from 24 to 34. It, it I was like, yes, suspect. he's about to get it wrong. It's <laughs> uh, actually 34. Literally 34 fucking I was like, 24 people. feels low. Throw 10 on that. I'm just taking a fucking <laughs> ballpark guess. That's the exact number? That is the exact oh, that's, number. This is looking like that's a good category. How many people dope. does Dr. Schultz kill? <laughs> oh, come on, man. That's uh, 24. Eight. Okay. Eight people. Okay. All right. Next question. He's not as bloodlusty. So Quentin Tarantino has done 10. Theatrical releases. Yep. How many of those films has Samuel Jackson been in? Okay, I'm going to just go through it. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, no. So we're at zero. Pulp Fiction, yes. One. Jackie Brown, t- yes. Two. He's in one of the Kill Bills. Are we counting Kill Bill as one or two movies? He's only in one of them. So, we're, But we're counting as it's two one. movies. So oh. it doesn't matter. So yeah, so that's three. He's the narrator in, um, in Glorious Bastards, four. Django, five. Hateful Eight, six. He's not in... Not in Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. He's, I don't think there are any black people in Once Upon a Time, Leonard. We can come back to that. But uh, uh, he's not in... Actually, I haven't seen Death Proof. So I don't... I'm going to say... I'm just going to th- assume that I forgot. I'm going to say he's in seven. Should have stuck with six, my guy. Fuck. He's actually only in five, but he narrates in Inglorious Master. So that technically... There's literally six. that one scene where he just goes, Hugo Stiglitz. <laughs> like, that's the whole <laughs> yeah, part he's in. Glorious Bastards is great. Um... Oh, six. Okay, so six out of ten, not seven out of ten. I should have done. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going to ask you who the role is written for specifically, but I'm going to go. There were two other people he had in mind. For this? For Steven? For St- not for Steven. For Django. Oh. Can you name? It was more than two. Can you name two of them besides Will Smith? All right. So I have to name two people not Will Smith. Yes. Okay. Shit, I don't know. Because um, uh, especially with Tarantino, like there, it, only, like, there are only so many mainstream yeah. black actors. <laughs> yeah, but Tarantino pulls people out. He could have gotten like some of the one of the guys from different strip. Like he like goes back into the past when he casts <laughs> these movies. Uh, who is popular in? Like, What's the guy? I, I oh, oh uh, was it Terrence? Uh, fuck! Terrence, why can't I remember his last name? Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard was he one? I'm gonna I'm gonna go off Rod there and choose that. Well, that's Rod saying. Doesn't it. matter. He's this is me guess. just guessing. He's like both dope of our black guests. dudes who could do it. Us. All right. So all right, you got one. Oh, that was one. Nice. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Um, who else was like I? I don't think like Idris was big enough that he was thinking about Idris, mm. but uh, not in 2011. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think like if if you can't get Will Smith, who do you go to? Go to Jamie Foxx. Uh, but you might also try. 
one of these roles would have been great. He would have been great, and he's popping right now. Uh, not Mahershala. Mahershala wasn't a wasn't nope, a big enough no. star at the time. I mean, uh, I'm still thinking like I guess Don Cheadle's my other guess. All right, Don Cheadle, sure. That's wrong, but oh, <laughs> fuck you. Thanks for talking. All right, so I just I should just throw one out and just pick. Um, this is like exposing the dearth of leading black men in Hollywood. <laughs> that would have been, or I'm just my mind is drawing a blank. So I'll say, we did you say no to Idris, or you didn't look? Did you say Idris Elba? You want me to? You, your did eyes you say Idris Elba? No, I didn't. I'm just saying okay. his name for fun. <laughs> All right. Just say it. Just lean Idris in. Idris Elba. Correct. Oh, <laughs> that's who I was talking about. Who's popping? Great. I'm give you some other names. I Chris only Tucker. Two. Get out of Hell here. Hell no. Chris Tucker. Get out of here. Tyrese. <laughs> Tyrese Gibson. Tyrese Gibson. Michael Kenneth Williams. I can't think of who that is. That's uh, Omar. Oh shit. Yeah. I was th- I was gonna that, say Omar. Michael, Cause I, but I didn't think okay. that that would. He be would have been good. Uh, all right. So this is the last. This is the bonus one. Someone, when they found out that Will Smith didn't want to do it, tried to lobby Quentin Tarantino to let him be Django. Who was it? Shit. Um, uh, I mean, because it's got to be a ridiculous answer. I don't. Uh, <laughs> is it not someone that you already just said? It's probably it's not. okay. It was Spike Lee, wasn't it? It was Spike Lee. <laughs> They've had some trouble with the law in the last year or two. In the last year or two. Oh, you know what I was thinking? Uh, he probably would have been. He probably would have thought. He of him was as, once popping. Would have thought of him as too old, but like Wesley Snipes would have been someone who that like been, that could have been dope. Um, Fifty Cent. Trouble with the law in the last year or two. He's too light. He was too light skinned to play this role. Oh, well, now I'm not going to answer that, Rod. You can Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Cuba Gooden Jr. Oh, oh that's, not cra- that's not that crazy. Yeah. I mean, he is too light skinned. was crazy. His career was over. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. He's, you don't look slavish enough, bro. You, that's so, what I said. He's too can't, can't be mixed and play a you can't be out here. slave. <laughs> Daddy Day I mean, you can. <laughs> you, you can? Oh, Eddie, Mur- would, like, Eddie Murphy would not have worked. But Eddie Murphy is the kind of thing when you think about like him going and digging Travolta out of the past for Pulp Fiction where it's like, I, if... if Tarantino just was really on one. He was just been like Eddie Murphy as Django. Damn, Eddie Murphy could have maybe been Steven. Oh, Steven is very interesting, actually. But yeah, it wouldn't have worked. Well, I was thinking Django. about that earlier before I said Danny Glover, but I, I don't think every time I've ever seen Eddie Murphy like do like a real like angry face, I don't believe it. He's like too <laughs> like jolly or something in his eyes. He can't like do okay. what Samuel did there. All right, Quinn, you got a game for me? Yes, I do. Um, my game is, uh, let's see here. Which one do I want to do first? I have some trivia questions for okay. you. Let's just do it that way. Um, the first one, I am going to ask you, uh, there were a number of snake bites in the snake attack sequence. There were. Rod, you please feel free to help Leonard out with this one if you. I'm going to give you four places that people were bit by snakes, okay. and you need to identify the false. There's only one. One is wrong. Okay. Three are correct. We can do this a couple times. Um, I uh, stumped film, Quinn in this game with the uh, life. <laughs> in the film, we, we, we see people get bit in the jugular. We see someone get bit in the eyeball. We see someone get bit on the testicles. And we see someone get bit on the ass. I Which of those is wrong? Sure. I know the one that's wrong. You know? Yeah. I'll give you. Do you want time no, to figure no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't remember. You help me out. You can. Help I remember out. the well, dick. I don't know if I remember the balls. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think anybody got bit on the balls. You think they made it this entire movie and no one got their their, nope. their I nose do, chomped I by I do snake? think no one got their balls. Because someone bit got bit in the snake. jugular for sure. So because I know balls. the. I remember each of the other ones. Yeah, he's vividly. mad. <laughs> right. <laughs> well done. All right. In this film, someone got bit on the tongue. Someone got bit in their Achilles heel, the back of their foot. Someone got Not bit. A lady. In the chest, yep, and someone got bit on their nipple and the breast, more specifically. We all remember that part. So One of those was, is uh, wrong. It was Samuel L. Jackson's partner who got bit in the chest. The lady smoking weed, fucking, got bit on the titty. I'm trying to Achilles. I feel like I want to say it was the lady trying to run, trying to save the, the baby. Change. Also, that baby would have died. Uh, trying to save the baby. <laughs> the baby, baby was lives. like, there's like hundreds of snakes. The baby's just like, Ooh, just like, literally shaking a rattle. Yeah. Um, 
And what was the other one? Tongue. Tongue. Yeah. I so don't I don't remember tongue. Yeah, I don't think there was any tongue one. But the one that could have been is when the snake was in the bag, but it bit her. I'm thinking about that said, old lady where it's like, oh, the, the trope of like, oh, the horny, uh, uh, gross old lady, and it goes up her dress, and then I think she's like, oh, and she's like feeling good, and then it bites her. No, that that bites her in the in the eye. Yeah, that, that actually that like that one lady gets who's like sleeping gets bit in the eye. Whoever's throwing up in the throat bag, I feel like also gets bit in the eye. I think she gets bit on the tongue. This is tough because I can't really remember an Achilles, but there's so many yeah, of the regular like bites. Happened. All right, I'm gonna. Go I actually with... think actually the the lady who saved the baby gets bit on like the back yeah. of the shoulder, yeah. so I actually think it's Achilles. All right, it's my guess. Son of a bitch, you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> the tongue, I think, was from. I think it. You're right. I don't know if the tongue, the, the, the vomit bag was the eyeball or the tongue. Someone definitely got bit, bit in the tongue because you see it quite vividly. And then there's a shot later where she's in her seat and her tongue has swollen and she's like choking on it. It's pretty yeah. gruesome. It's definitely it. the throat bag is the tongue because yeah. the eye is the sleeping lady. Yep. 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 All right. Um, I got one more. Or no, actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on because you're, you're too good at this. So, <laughs> these are ways that snakes died in the film. And I can give you two of these as well. So, snakes were murdered in this film via use of a taser. Yep. A microwave. Yep. A f- harpoon. Or old age. Old age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, for real though, Samuel Jackson was not scared of any of these fucking snakes. Neither was Keenan. Like he was just—they were just out here whipping snakes, bro. Yeah, just, there were so yeah. many things because you know it was CGI where people were just like grabbing them by the tail, and I'm like, "Don't do that! They can still get the head around on you." And it's like, "Oh, they just told the actors like pick them up and throw." It. All right, I got one more for you then. Uh, snakes were killed in this movie by use of an axe, uh, yep. improvised aerosol flamethrower, yep. uh, being sucked out of an airplane window, yep. or by a fire extinguisher. They didn't get killed by the fire extinguisher. Yeah, right. no this fire game is fucking bullshit. All right, I'm going to give you one. <laughs> also, though, that big-ass anaconda gets snuck out while still, like, eating the dude. Yeah. Is yeah, that what see, that was? I guess yeah, it happened dude. so fast. I was like, what's happening? I think you see, like, his feet. Like, it's bad CGI, but it gets whipped by so quick because they're all getting sucked out of the plane that you see, like, his also, feet are still Also, the, the, the cabin pressurizes again, even though the whole, like... Like, when they're about to land, it's like the I air think, would still continue being sucked out of the I think eventually plane. it does stabilize or something. Ever since the movie How, Goldfinger, though? where, like, he shoots yeah. the airplane window and then an entire large man gets sucked out of that little window, I've been unclear on the physics of uh Well, I think that there's, you know, you, but... by the time that they were settled down, they were also landing. So I think their altitude was just way lower. Okay. Which um, I don't know how much that plays into it, fast. but, yeah. I don't know. I they were like, slowing down and going. They, yeah, because... When he takes over the controls, they're all still, like, holding on. And then once he starts to, like, descend, then they, like, settle into their seats. Yeah, I, I, I guess. All right, the, I have- the movie has a, a weird amount of, like, justifications that actually you're like, I'm like, this is crazy. And I'm like, okay, I guess they just explained that. That's weird. You don't think they've exhausted all other options? <laughs> uh, uh, so there are two characters. Here's this game where I'm pretty confident I'm going to trip you up, Leonard. Okay. And, um, you know, Django is, a, is very much a... I mean, it's a movie for everybody, but it's a movie about black issues. Um, so I'm going to go on the white issue of this movie, Snakes on a Plane. There are two characters in this film. Uh, one is the uh, kind of Paris Hilton-like character. Her name is Mercedes. Yes, it is. Uh, and then there is the flight attendant, uh, best bud of Juliana Margulies, the blonde flight attendant who ends up with Sean Jones. Her name is Tiffany. I'm going to show you two pictures of these women, and I'm going to ask you to correctly... Pick who is who. Uh, this is a visual <laughs> game, so you're going to, uh, you know, people listening aren't going to see this, but I will try as best I can to describe the dismay on Leonard's face as he tries to do this. And just for good measure, I'm going to show you two pictures, one picture of each of these women, and then a third picture is Alicia Silverstone, and you have to <laughs> make sure you this correctly identify them. Is it Rupert? I can't even, the sketch always got me. What is it? Dilbert Malroney or... Oh, Dermot Mulroney or, or um, D- Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. Dylan. <laughs> All right, Leonard, I'm showing you a picture now. I'll, don't guess it, just yet. One of these is Mercedes. One of these is Tiffany in the movie. And one of them is Alicia Silverstone, who if you pick, you lose. Um, okay. There's a second picture. Okay. And there's a third picture. Okay. I'm just going to cycle through these. And you need to tell me the f- who's who. Wait, 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 wait. 
Wait a second. <laughs> I mean, I know this, but this is funny that you say even wait. This is so easy. <laughs> the middle one is Tiffany for sure. This is Tiffany? Yes. The flight attendant? Yes. Okay. <laughs> is the first one not also Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs> are they all, are also, they all, why do you use that picture are they for all Alicia Tiffany? Silverstone? These are three, these That's are three. the worst picture you Wait, is that Alicia use. Silverstone, the first one? These are three different women. <laughs> uh, yeah. The first one's Alicia Silverstone, right? This is Alicia Silverstone? Yes. You lose again. You lost, <laughs> man. God damn. Which one is Alicia Silverstone? <laughs> the third, third one, one, which is a crazy photo. He basically cheated with that third photo. Wait, wait, I cheated. Where is he cause, 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 Cause most people consider her when they think of Alicia Silverstone, they think clueless. Ooh. And you went with like a current plastic surgery Ooh. version. Wait, wait a second. <laughs> Which one was Julia Mag whatever her name is? Juliana Margulies is not you're not picking yeah, from her. So who was I picking from? <laughs> <laughs> he said it so clearly. Alicia Silverstone, <laughs> Tiffany. And who was the third and Mercedes, one? Mercedes, the one with the oh, little Mercedes. dog. Oh, the first one was Mercedes. She's yes. the only one you got right. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, you got Tiffany, but you lost. I don't. She's also in the me. movie Spread. That's how I would never forget her face because oh. she gets smashed by Ashton Kusher in that movie very violently. Um, so, so I feel like that's I a bad, won stats. That's a bad look for you. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think to make the sporting going into the final round, you got to one stats. I mean, listen, Django was a better box office movie. You, yes. But you lost Pick the White Lady, so I think that we have to get <laughs> Which is pretty shameful. Oh, man. Okay. Apologies to Alicia Silverstone. Not a, I, I think that's a wash. I think it's 2 2. We're going <laughs> all right, two, 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 Make it 2 2. Keep it hot. What's this whole thing coming all down right, to? All right. So now, oh, wait, before we go to the fifth pick. Oh, yeah. yeah Rod can weigh in on this because, Rod, you have a uh, basketball uh, Yes, background, but he so. also hates this person. Okay. Oh, okay. What? This will be interesting. Rod has not listened to our podcast. Um, it's okay, though. He has a lot of things he's doing. Would Michael, or not would, has. Has Michael Jordan seen either of these films, Rod? What, what does your gut tell you? Michael Jordan has not seen Snakes on the Plane, and he has seen Django Unchained. Where, what's your reasoning for that? Uh, I think in 2006, especially, he was just too big of a dick to like want to do anything that he didn't think was worth his time. And I oh, think that's that, been his entire life. Interesting. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying especially then. He's retired. Because I think he has. Time. I think now, if if Snakes on the Plane came out now, he'd be more likely to see it. Mm-hmm. Is what I mean. Just because he is like softening up a little bit. Uh, and I think he did see Django, but. Not because he wanted to, just because like some woman he was smashing wanted to see it. I think he was married at the time to a wife. He's been married and divorced multiple times. I don't think that matters to him. Can I pitch you? Can I pitch you in a, just a? I, I don't know if he's seen it or not. None of us know, but Michael Jordan. You know, we all watched uh, uh, the, the Last Dance. The Last Dance. A lot of that footage was him on airplanes. Uh, you know, with his headphones on, bopping, blowing up the spot of his teammates who were stepping out on their girlfriends or wives. Maybe he's had a bad dream before of flying on a long overnight to play the Lakers uh, that there were some snakes on his Which plane. Which is why he hasn't watched yeah, this Yeah, I don't think but. that's... Uh, every plane flight Michael Jordan's ever been on, he spent the entirety of it gambling. Guaranteed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he probably gambled on how many times the N-word gets used. Maybe he's and... friends with Samuel L. Jackson. Do we think they have a friendship or and a And that's why he saw Django. Django. Oh, so he would see Django, but he didn't, see, not snakes on a plane. didn't see Snakes not on a Plane. And he would probably clown Samuel for doing Snakes on a Plane before he'd see it. Yeah, well, we can clown Michael Jordan for being on The Wizards. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's not necessarily a criteria, but we always talk about it. We just it. talk about now it. Now it's time for the fifth <laughs> and final criteria. What, which of these movies, if you were to say, hey, Leonard, let's come hang out, we have some beers, watch a Samuel L. Jackson movie. Which of these movies most accurately dis- fits that description? Is that is that which the, is am the I putting that the right Samuel way? Samuel L. Jackson. Which is the most Samuel L. Jackson movie? All right, I make your case. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna start off with. I know your argument is gonna be Samuel L. Jackson is not in my movie as much. You don't see him until, like I said, an hour. I think in six minutes until the film, and maybe an hour and a half. But like I said earlier. This motherfucker carries the film. He is the star of the second half of this film. We get hella motherfuckers from him. We get a hella crass looks. We get zoomed in shots of his great facial expressions. We see him being sneaky. We see him being conniving. We see him being deceiving. His his character also has hella layers. He starts out like he doesn't want people to realize how much power he has. 
He wants them to think of him as a weak old man, but really he still got the, the mind, the foresight and the ability to run this entire goddamn plantation. Also, Rod said he couldn't even watch fucking Avengers because he hated this man so damn much. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker should have won an Oscar for this role. He killed this role. He Michael Jordan this bitch, dog. You know what I'm saying? He was the finals MVP of he this LeBron movie. did. He LeBron did. Whatever you want to <laughs> say. He was the finals MVP of this movie. Snakes on a plane, like I said, was entertaining, but it's so goddamn trash. And you know what? I know you're going to argue he's the star of the movie. He's not on the goddamn screen that much in this movie, in Snakes on a Plane. He's on the screen maybe 50% of the time. I respect your argument, first off. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long road leading us to this point. Um, I like Django Unchained, okay? Here's where I'm going to attack your argument. You better. Here's where I'm going to attack your argument. I think it's a good movie. I think, you know, and I think it's totally like we both watch this movie. This whole movie is about us. This whole show is about us growing up watching sometimes the same movies, getting different things from them. I think we probably get different things from Django, but I think we like a lot of the same stuff in it. I don't think of this as a Samuel L. Jackson movie. When I think of it, I think of it as a Quentin Tarantino movie. And I think of it as a Jamie Foxx movie or maybe even a Christoph Waltz movie. Christoph Waltz won the Oscar for this movie. It's ridiculous to think Christoph Waltz, the white guy, is the face of the movie. He's not. But Samuel L. Jackson shows up fairly late in the film. He does prove to ultimately be the villain. I think that saves the argument. If Samuel L. Jackson was only kind of the, the, the character that he appears to be when he's first introduced, you would be like, this is like a totally different you know, movie. But when he, you give him the villain, you give him back some of his dignity. Even though the character is no less despicable, he becomes more legitimate. And you're like, now I see why Samuel L. Jackson is playing this character because you need someone of his ability to to make that turn believable um but if we're picking quentin tarantino movies starring samuel l jackson how do you not pick pulp fiction i mean that's to me the more we talked about that's jules is that but you did not choose i did fiction i didn't choose it but i didn't choose it for the reason (laughs) not because it was comparing it against Django. but i'm i'm thinking of when i think of samuel l jackson and maybe this goes back to like other characters of his i like like the character in the other guys i think of him as uh, whether he's good or bad a kind of an authoritative figure who cusses he's got all the confidence in the world like that's that role and i think snakes on a plane realize that and use that uh that deep blue sea kind of samuel l jackson and built a whole movie around it and it's ridiculous and it's not gonna argue that it's the better movie but i think it is the more uh if you were to just tell someone like oh here's a samuel l jackson movie people would be like Oh, Snakes on a Plane, that's a Samuel L. Jackson movie. Django, that's a that's a Jamie Foxx, Quentin Tarantino movie. I mean, and the name is Django. It's not Steven. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I mean, when I feel like when you think of Quentin Tarantino, you think of Samuel L. Jackson. True, that's fair. Um, there is no way that the Steven character can be in this film for the full two and a half hours. Two hours and 45 minutes. Two hours and 40. There's no way he can be in the film for two and a half hours. He is so captivating and so evil and you hate him so much that you couldn't take that for two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes. Sure. So I'm also going to say this. You say the snakes on the plane is the most Samuel L. Jackson, this and that. His character is so fucking shallow. There's no depth. He's just literally, you can literally watch the film and be like, this was a money grab. This is, and I'm not mad at him for it. And like I said, I was entertained but he didn't have to do any fucking work. He literally is playing just himself. Motherfucking Samuel L. Jackson acted his ass off in Django. He put in the work. He made a player that I fuck. He made a character that I despise. And he's an amazing actor. And I feel like he, I feel like, the, as I said earlier, the role was written for him. And he curses, he yells, but he does it with depth and meaning and feeling and i think that is better it's no doubt it's 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 no doubt a better performance i would i would i guess my like counter to that would be when you're a movie star i don't know how much acting george clooney does in oceans 11 but he is danny ocean or who is george clooney he's trading off of that movie star persona that we know and expect when you say you want to see a george clooney movie you're not talking about syriana 
you're talking about Ocean's 13 or Out of Sight or some movie in which George Clooney is being George Clooney. And I think that applies to Samuel L. Jackson more so here when you're talking Snakes on a Plane. I don't think so because Samuel L. Jackson's movies are good movies. This some is of them. out of this Snakes on a Plane is outside of his box or like wheelhouse of films. When you think of Samuel Jackson, you think of him yelling, being in a high intense situation. <laughs> like with a bunch of snakes on a plane. <laughs> yes, but like I feel like there's more depth and it feels more real. I'm thinking, like I said, die hard, pulp fiction. SWAT. Hateful A. <laughs> SWAT. Like View Terrace. All right. We both talked about We're not going to come Rod has it. So this yeah, is Rod, Rod is now your time for your soliloquy, your decision. Yeah. Bear in mind, Rod, we've been doing this for nine episodes now. The loser has to watch a movie that they really don't want to watch. This, it all comes down to this, Rod. We put it entirely in your hands. Okay, well, I heard you guys both made very good points. The question that I'm hearing is, which is the most Samuel L. Jackson movie? Samuel L. Jackson isn't the lead in most movies, So I would lean Django on that one. But in every movie he's in, he basically is a ridiculous character that doesn't have a lot of depth. I love the Avengers movies, but Nick Fury isn't some character providing depth to it. He's used as a device to, like, bring the depth out of everyone else. He literally, like, just says motherfuckers. He's being dusted at the end of uh, of, of Infinity War. Uh, I think about... Movies like, again, I said I liked uh, Secrets, uh, Kingsman and uh, Incredibles. And in both of those movies, he, he doesn't have the most screen time. And his characters are ridiculous and, again, don't have a lot of depth. I think that Snakes on a Plane better encapsulates that overall. He's so good in Django that it's not Samuel L. Jackson. It's probably the only movie of his, I, again, that... You feel like anything watching him. So you don't think Pulp Fiction is a Samuel L. Jackson movie, or no? I just I don't think, think I don't think he Unbreakable. Yeah, I don't think he has some. I haven't seen Unbreakable, so I can't speak to that movie. But I think that there's way more movies where he's there to be ridiculous than there are of him being. Django's the only movie because I've seen where it's like, oh shit, like this motherfucker's acting, acting. So I guess when I think but of I what... But I still feel like it's Samuel. Like, if, fair Samuel, enough. But if, 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 I'm watching, <laughs> if I'm watching a a basketball game and a guy averages 10 points, but then in the finals he scores 31 game, is this guy an all-star or is he a guy who had one game that was special? I think that Django is his special moment and he's usually a 10-point-a-game guy, which is what Snakes on a Plane is. So I think that is the more Samuel L. Jackson movie to me. So that's your choice. That is my choice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so close. You <laughs> fucking chose Snakes <laughs> on a Plane? As, that is the better movie. It's worse. I don't like it. I'd rather watch Django a million times over. I think his performance is fucking impressive to the point of, yeah, he should have won. He should win five Oscars for that shit. And it's important, the role that he plays. It's just not, it's Fuck out of character God. for him. Fuck it's you out God. of character for him to do that. It's oh. not out of character. <laughs> oh, Leonard, I, I was feeling real unsure when we started, when we sat down. I told you this. Now, <laughs> well, I, oh, we got to have Rod back every week. I feel like this is huge for me. Oh, I was so afraid. I was so afraid. Now we know what the L in Samuel L. Jackson stands for. It stands for Leonard. <laughs> Stands for loser. Stands for Leroy, actually. <laughs> it's Leroy. Yeah, that is hilarious. That is like his the name bl- is, Louis, is Leroy Jackson. If he takes out the Samuel, oh my God, I, I, I wish his name was. You don't know Leroy how many people Jackson. have called me Leroy in my life. <laughs> God damn, it. Leonard. I'm sorry, man. You picked. You picked. You, the, the only thing I could get in for was that it's not quite what you expect from a Samuel Jackson performance. Thank you so much, Rod. Uh, Leonard, tell should I tell people what you're going to have to do? I'm not saying it. We'll come back next week, but Leonard, I think we discussed. Uh, you now have to watch Leonard's favorite character, uh, superhero character, Rod, you may know, is the Green Lantern. Okay. If you know why that is, tell me, because I don't know. But that's his favorite superhero character. He's never seen the Ryan Reynolds film, The Green Lantern. Uh, 
directed by Martin Campbell. I saw it in theaters. It's trash. So you now have to watch it two times, and you got to tweet about it. You got to live tweet it one time, and we're going to let everybody know when you're doing it because I really want to see what you react to in that movie in real time. Maybe we'll figure something else out in front of it, but you have to. we're going to get you reacting to that movie in some way. And then also, just for good measure, in the same 24-hour period that you have to watch Green Lantern twice, you have to watch the Gary Marshall film Mother's Day, which Leonard is in, Rod. I don't know if you know this, but he's never seen it. And he's apparently he's in a scene at a bar with Jason Sudeikis. And I'm sure you're just in the background, but I like to think you guys are having beer together. <laughs> and you got to tell us about that, too. So you now have two movie punishments that you have to take out sometime I hope I didn't in the next. I the final cut. I don't know if I did or not. You've, what a time to find out you've been cut from it, because then you watch the whole movie and you don't even see yourself. Oh, uh, man. I feel 10 pounds lighter. So fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like on all the criteria, I really split on each one. I just, it's just how it happened, we gave bro. You two very different ends of the spectrum of Samuel L. Jackson movies. So, Rod, you, I, we listened to your thought process. I thought that was great. I'm very happy with the result. Um, I thought uh, we had a lot of good conversation, and um, we, uh, I'm just smiling. I don't know, Leonard. Do you, <laughs> what are we? Next episode. So this is episode nine. The, the series is over. The belt is mine. Hard one. Uh, season one. Movie belt goes to me. Uh, this is like the 1950s, 60s NBA, where it's, this shit don't matter. The Celtics <laughs> went on this bullshit ass trip. Uh, the next next week's season episode, two, we'll wrap everything up. We'll talk about season two. We'll get into some awards, and we'll see how these punishments go for you, Leonard. It'll be fun. Yeah, we'll talk about some awards. We're gonna <laughs> we talk about the best. You know, guys, give us some input. We're gonna talk about. The overall best movie out of all the movies that we chose. Yeah, we'll Kendall have some fun stats, I'm sure. Um, we'll talk about Quinn's. We'll do a Quinn's best movie, my best movie, the worst movie. I guess I was thinking about maybe what's the best Samuel L. Jackson movie, but <laughs> it's going to be Django Unchained. I don't think um, it's either. I mean, Django, is that your favorite Samuel L. Jackson movie? I prop because I probably would have gone Pulp Fiction. Or something. I, like I, I it chose may be Pulp Fiction, but it's probably Django. Django, all right. Well, it's well, definitely his best performance. It's, yeah, I would, I would, I think that's a fair. I, I mean, Django is one of my top five favorite movies of all time. But, so. uh, well, I'm sorry that you're forever associated with this loss, but uh, it was a, it was a lot of fun. This has been great. Thank you, Rod. No, uh, don't no. Fuck no, thank you, Rod. You thank your guest. You have a guest. Uh, Rod, no, shout yourself out on what you need to shout. Yeah, Rod, out what on. do you have? Please plug anything you got. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can catch me on uh, Instagram at Z-S-O-R-R-Y-O-N. I have a podcast called Crossover. Uh, we have to search Believe in the Crossover, which I do hate, but that's the network we're on. And when he uh, says Believe, it's B-L-E-A-V. Yes, Believe. I don't say it like Believe because it's written Believe. Again, I don't get it. Whatever. They pay me like basically nothing, but I do do it. <laughs> uh, I also host uh, a series of videos on Wave TV discussing NBA topics. You can find those wherever. And I tweet like 50 times a day at Boom, though, B-O-O-M-T-H-O. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you again. Sincerely, I, Leonard's not going to thank you, but thank you for, for doing this for us. This has been a ton of fun. <laughs> and, and I'm uh, going to take this L so the Braves can get this W. <laughs> Uh, so I'm not even mad about it and even that might have aged poorly by the time this comes out so we'll see <laughs> <laughs> until next time we will see you at the cinema fuck the cinema <laughs> <laughs> so much